everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will talk about plant and variety. So before we go further, we need to uh, recall back on the double fertilization. So after pollen is deferred to the stigma, yeah, it must germinate and grow through the side to reach the ovule. The microspore or the pollen contain two cells. So the pollen tube cell and the generative cell. The pollen tube cell grow into a pollen tube through which the generative cell travel. The germination of the pollen tube require water, oxygen and certain chemical signal. As it travels to the side to reach the embryo sac here, the pollen tube grow is supported by the tissue of the cyan. During this process, if the generative cell has not already split into two cells, it now divides to from two sperm cells. The pollen tube is guided by the chemical secret by the synergies present in the embryo sac. It enters the ovule sac through the microphylum. Of the two sperm cells, one sperm fertilizes the egg cell, forming a diploid zygote here. And another sperm fuses the two pollen nuclei, forming a triploid cell that develops into endosperm. Together, these two fertilization events in angiosperm are known as double fertilization. After fertilization is complete, no other sperm can enter. The fertile of the ovary becomes the fruit, usually developing the seeds. So there are three events after fertilization occur that is called post-fertilization event. Uh, this event including uh, embryogenesis, endosperm, and seeds. So plant embryogenesis is a process that occur after the fertilization of the ovule to produce a fully developed plant embryo. The zygote produced after fertilization must undergo various cellular divisions and differentiation to become a mature embryo. An end stage embryo has five major components including shoot epigomerism, hypocotyl, root meristem, root caps and cotyledons. Unlike animal embryogenesis, plant embryogenesis results in an immature form of the plant, lacking more structures like leaves, stem, and reproductive structures. However, both plants and animals plus to the phototypic stage that involve independently and that causes a developmental constraint limiting morphological diversification. So after the double fertilization, the embryogenesis occurs naturally as a result of uh, this uh, single or double fertilization of the ovule give rise to two distinct structures which is the plant embryo and the endosperm which go on to develop into a seed. The embryo will go through various uh, cellular differentiation and then uh, division in order to produce a mature embryo. This uh, morphogenesis event form the basic structural pattern of the development of the shoot, roots, body and the primary tissue layer. It also programmed the region of meristematic tissue formation. The following morphogenesis event that I am going to discuss is uh, particularly to unicot and not for monocot. So this is the embryo. Uh, this is the zygote. The zygote undergo an asymmetric transverse cell division that give rise to uh, two cells. So the first is the uh, terminal cell. It's on the top and contain most of the uh, uh, cytoplasm. The upper substances uh, found within the cell from the original zygote. It will later form hypocotyl, uh, shoot epigomerism, and cotyledon while the basal cell at the bottom consists of last vacuum and give rise to hypophysis and the suspensor. So, so this picture shows that the difference of uh, embryo from monocot and dicot. So as we know that monocot differ from uh, dicot in four distinct structural features. So we can see the differences in leaf, stem, roots and flower. But uh, all these differences actually start from the very beginning of the plant life cycle that is the seed. So within the seed lies the plant embryo. 
whereas the monocot have one cotyledon, dicot have two. The small differences as the very part of the plant life cycle then lead to plant to develop vast difference. So this is a very basic differences of uh, embryo of monocot and dicot. So the monocot have one cotyledon while dicot have two. The pumule is lateral in monocot and uh, in zygote is uh, distally. Cotyledon occupy the terminal position in monocot and the cotyledon occur laterally in dicot. So we can observe the envelope of pumule which is called coleoptite in monocot but in dicot it is absent, similar to the core Loreza protects red, that protect radical can be observed in monocot and monocot also have a scutellum which is also absent. So during the embryogenesis, angiosperm will undergo three of other critical events. So the storage food in the cotyledon or endosperm, differentiation of ovule tissue to form a seed cord and the development of scalpel wall into the so the endosperm is a tissue process inside the seed of most of flowering plants follow the double fertilizations. It is triploid, meaning that three chromosomes set per nucleus was formed. It surrounds the embryo and provides nutrients in the form of starch. Two is can also contain the oil and protein. This can make endosperm a source of nutrient in animal feeds, for example. Wheat endosperm is ground into flour for bread. The rest of the grain is included as well as in whole wheat flour. While barley endosperm is the main source of sugar for beer production. Other examples of endosperm that form the bulk of the edible portions are coconut meat and the coconut water, and or for example corn. Some plants such as orchid lack of endosperm in their seed. The second types of the endosperm formation is the cellular, where a cell wall formation is coincident with the nuclear divisions. Coconut meat is cellular endosperm. So, Arocasia has cellular endosperm developed, while other monocot are herobial. So, the third one is the herobial endosperm formation, where a cell wall is laid down between the first two nucleus. So the after which one half develop endosperm along the cellular pattern and the other half. So this is a very simple scratch of the diagram showing the three type of endosperm uh, development. So uh, endosperm uh, can be formed as a liquid or solid and also the nutrient content inside the uh, endosperm. It is, could be a very thick, freshy uh, cotyledon and also might be a very waxy and oily endosperm. So, uh, depend on the uh, uh, endosperm distributions within a mature seed, we can further categorize the endosperm into two. The first is exabluminous or non endospermic seed, where endosperm will be used up during the development of embryo. So, uh, because the food that preserved in the embryo will be used up, and the example is in the pea plant, mustard, or sunflower. Another type is the albuminous or endospermic seed, where the endosperm proceeding with the seed along with embryo. So, cotyledon, thin, peppery, and do not store food. So, the example is the cotton papaya, mess, and cashew. So the next is the development of the seed. So part of a seed along with the ovule is protected by seed cord that is formed from integument of the oval sac. In the cord plant, the seed cord is further divided into the outer cord known as testa and inner cord known as the tegmen. The embryonic axis consists of three parts which is the pumule, the radical and the hypocotyl. The portions of the embryo between the cotyledon attachment point and the radical is known as the hypocotyl. 
the embryonic axis terminate in the radical, which is the region of which the root will develop. This is a, a seed part. The so this one uh, picture show where is the uh, seed deal. So seed uh, an important adaptation uh, for the plant uh, for long term survival because. They maintain the dormancy under unfavorable uh, conditions. The dormancy means that they prevent the seed from germination. They protect the young plant inside the seed cord uh, when it is not vulnerable. They provide the food as in the endosperm uh, for the embryo until it can produce its own food via photosynthesis. So they facilitate the dispersal of the embryo. So when uh, the embryo meet the optimum conditions, they will break the dormancy and germ. So seed dormancy. What is a seed dormancy? Is a is actually is a condition where extremely low metabolite rate, near to zero, and suspensions of growth and development. So the environmental conditions require to break the dormancy. Well, these environmental conditions varies between species. Some need the high temperature, some need a very cold temperature, and but most of the seed germinate require the uh, exposure to water. So seed germinate as soon as they are in a certain. So uh, there are a specific adaptation ensure that seed will germinate under only a specific condition. So one example is the jack pine is require a very hot uh, weather uh, temperature to break the dormancy and germinate. So uh, was found mostly in the very northern part of central and eastern US and Canada. The corn are very thick and hard. So they are literally glue shut with a strong resin. So because this resin can protect the uh, plant from germination, the only way is to break or remove the resin. So when the uh, fire swept through a forest of jack pine, the heat from the fire melting the resin and allowing the corn to open up and release the Another inhibitor such as ABA is a very important component for seed dormancy. So ABA will signal to the seed either to go on to uh, for dormancy or to uh, for germination. So there are two types of um, uh, technique. So uh, the, the last one example of very uh, 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 specific uh, way of break uh, dormancy. So we'll, this is via the uh, uh, animal uh, bowel enzymatic response. So western coastal wells uh, reproduce via numerous long life seed. These seeds are mainly dispersed by animals that consume them. Studies have demonstrated that the birds, ants, and small vertebrates are all heavily involved in the spread of this species. It also been found that the germinations of western coastal wells, such as in the uh, pictures here, the seed is enhanced by passing through the gut of the bird. So after that, the uh, next step of uh, the development is the ovary development. So it will develop into the ovary, is actually will develop into the fruits that easier for seed to disperse. So a true fruit is a ripened ovary. Uh, fruits can be classified by their origin. They can be a simple fruit derived from a single ovary, such as the cherry. Aggregated fruits that derive from single flower with several scapel, such as the blackberry and the multiple fruits that develop from an inflorescence. So, um, fruit is uh, very simple, defined as the mature ovary or mature scapel. During seed formations, the flower ovary began to develop into the fruit. It is possible, however, for the fruits to develop without the seed development. So, example is the uh, asexual uh, propagations of the fruits, such as the banana, uh, current propagations without the formations of the seed. Developmentally, fruits are fascinating organs that contain three genotypes in one package. The fruit and seed cord are from the prior sporophyte generation. 
the developing seed contain remnants of the gametophyte generations and the embryo represent the next sporophyte generation scrub here this one and here is a developing seed cord at the so let's look at this picture which show the different type of uh, presentation so before I explain what is uh, presentations, so we need to recall back the stubble, which is the unit of genosium, which is a, a female organ that is a modified leaf and composed of upper stigma, middle star, and basal ovary. So the ovule is an outgrowth of the placenta. Each ovule is attached to its placenta by a stalk known as funicle. And the function or the arrangement of this placenta is uh, divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, different types. The first uh, marginal type of the placentation, the so this is the uh, result of the development of fruits. We have a simple aggregate fruit center, multiple fruits. So, uh, fruit disperser uh, occur through a wide array of methods, uh, can be injections and transport by the bird or other animal, uh, hitching and ride with hawk spine on the bird and mammals, or urials in catches by heavy wall, blowing by the wind and floating and drifting on the water. So this is an example of the fruits. So it's sometimes it's kind of very uh, special. And the features of the fruit is actually helping the fruit for a uh, major purpose that is dispersal to get out from the unfavorite conditions for the uh, next generation's uh, development. So uh, this very simple diagram show how the seed travel. We have uh, seed that travel by wind, uh, by animals, by water, by bursting, and um, also by human. So lastly, thank for watching, and uh, we see you see you again in the next lecture.